All right, so in this problem, we're given a situation and a scenario, and we have to identify the correct function table that goes with it. All right, so we're given a couple of bits of information that are going to be important. The first thing is that um, every person needs a shirt, which is $5.25. And they also need a package of ribbon that costs 50 cents. And then we have to identify the uh, data table set that would work for this. Now, what we're moving towards in this objective is this whole concept of y equals mx plus b. That's, that's what we're moving towards in this, in this particular um, objective. So <clears throat> we, we're, we're told that y represents the total cost. We're told that x represents the number of members and then M is going to be the cost per member. Now in this scenario we actually don't use B. There's not a, there's not a constant in this. There's not a um, what we will come to be, to be known as the y-intercept. That part doesn't exist so really we're just dealing with for now this y equals mx. All right. So the M is the cost per person. All right, so as we're looking at this, we've got these two costs. Well, if I add these two up, I'm going to get $5.75. All right, so now that I've got my M, I can rewrite this as Y equals 5.75X. So this is the equation that I'm going to create. And then it's just a matter of looking at which data set matches this particular equation. All right, now all four of our answer choices use one, two, and three for our, um, for our X inputs. All right, so you should be able to relatively quickly just plug in if X is one, what's it gonna equal? If X is two, what's it going to equal? And then if x is 3, what's it going to equal? All right, so the first one, not a lot of computation here because it's just 5.75 when x is 1. When x is 2, we get 5.75 times 2. <clears throat> so that's going to give us 11.5. All right, and then for 3, I'm going to go ahead and do the computation on this. I trust my ment trusted my mental math here. I don't know that I trust my mental math here. I remember that's a seven, not a two. So y will be seventeen point two five when x is three, and then it's just a matter at, of looking at our answer choices and finding the response that matches for when x is one, when x is two, and when x is three. Each player needs shoes, which are seventy-eight fifty, and each player needs athletic tape, which is eight dollars. So every single player needs this amount. So if we're thinking about that as it relates to this y equals mx plus b equation, remember the m, that's our rate of change, that's our slope. The X is going to be our number of players, and the Y is going to be our total cost. We don't really have a value for B here, okay? Because the, a value for B would be something like, and the whole team had to pay $100 to rent a bus. We don't have anything like that. We're just looking at the cost for each player. So since we're looking at the cost for each player, we're, going to, we're not going to need that B value. All right, so again, we're just in this y equals mx. So the question now is, what is the m? What is that? What is every player going to need? Well, they're going to need these two things. So it's just a matter of adding these two things up. Every player, it's going to cost them 86.50, and that's it. 
y equals 86.5x. Because every single player is going to need these two things. And so our total cost is the number of players times this, this amount. So in this problem, which is a little bit different, but it's still going to follow this y equals mx plus b pattern. We're given a scenario where a family is on a road trip and they're traveling a set number of miles and then we're given the distance that they travel over the first three days. And then we're asked to set up an equation that would calculate the total number of days necessary. We don't actually even have to solve this equation, we just have to set it up. So when we're doing this, we have to think about what elements would fit in this equation. All right. Now our y is going to be our total. Because once we do all the computation, this is going to be the total that's left at the end. Well, if we think about this scenario in the situation, the total is the total number of miles that the family will travel. All right, so we're going to start there. So I'm going to replace y with 2,520 because that's the total number of miles that they're going to travel. All right. Now m. M is the rate, all right? M is always the, 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 the rate of change, or the, it'll be, eventually we'll, we'll see it as the slope on certain lines when we graph those lines. But it's the rate of change. It's how much x is changing with each interval of x, all right? So in this case, we have to think about the relationship between these two things. What, what is this equation really, really trying to figure out? Well, they're trying to figure out the number of days if they're traveling at a certain speed per day. So do you see how the speed that they're traveling in the first three days, that's their rate. That's how x is changing. And x in this case will actually be our number of days because that's ultimately what we're trying to, to figure out. We're trying to figure out what's, how many days to travel this distance if we're going at this rate. And so m, which is our rate of change, our slope value in this formula, m is going to be this rate. This, because the question is, is posed as, if they stay at this rate, 1,260 miles in three days, if they stay at that rate, how many days until they get to here? Now, again, our B in this scenario, in this, in this particular problem, we will not be using. All right? So this ends up being our solution. So this problem is a little bit interesting because we're not actually told specifically to create an equation. But if we do, it's going to tremendously help our ability to get the correct answer. So we're given a situation, very simple situation, where a balloon is, is rising in the air. And it's, we're given a rate in 20 feet every five seconds. That's the rate of change. All right, 20 feet every five seconds. And we're told that this rate is constant, that it will remain constant. All right, so the first thing we want to look at is in our equation here, remember M. That's our rate of change. That's our slope. All right, so we're going to substitute this 20 feet per 5 seconds in for m. Now, I'm going to go ahead and simplify this just for the sake of our computation in just a moment. So 20 over 5, if we simplify that, we should get 4. So this will simplify to 4 feet per second. All right. This will help us in our computations in a few minutes. All right, we're going to continue with this. Now, in this case, we don't have a value for B. A value for B could be the balloon started out, it was released at 10 feet or at 20 feet or at 30 feet and then began its ascent. We're told that the balloon starts at ground level. So there's no value here for B. Okay, now the reason that I keep writing it and bringing it up, because even though for this objective it's just y equals mx, I want us to always keep in mind that that, that b is waiting for us here pretty quickly. 
All right, so we have the equation y equals 4x, which makes sense, right? 20 feet over 5 seconds. So if, just to double check, 5 seconds, because x is our time, and then y is how high it's going. So if after 5 seconds, y would be 20, which is what our original rate was. And now it's just a matter of looking at our answer choices and selecting the one that makes the most sense. And the answer choices we're given um, are pretty consistent with 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 40 seconds, 50 seconds. All right. And if you just substitute in for your seconds, for x, each of those values, and we'll do a couple just to kind of help you out. So we'll just do, we'll do 10, 20, and 30. So if x is 10, what's y going to be? If x is 20, what's y going to be? If x is 30, what's y going to be? I feel pretty confident that you guys can uh, look at those last two if you still need to. So this question is a little bit different, and this is really moving us more towards the linear algebra part of this y equals mx plus b equation. So we really have to have a good understanding of how this equation relates to a line. All right. So our answer choices are given to us in, in some different formats. So we're going to ignore those for a second. Because what I want to do first, or what we need to do first, is we need to create an equation that matches this line. And then from there, we can look at what we're given and see which answer choice makes the most sense. So if I'm looking at this, and it's jumping ahead a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and address it now, and then we'll address it a little bit later in, in, uh, in some other practice sets. So B is our y-intercept. It's where the line crosses the y-axis. Well, it crosses the y-axis at zero, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate B because B would just be zero and it would just be our equation plus zero, which, which we wouldn't actually write. So we're just left with y equals mx. Our y is going to stay y in this equation and our x is going to stay x because if you look at our answer choices, a couple of the answer choices are written in this format and we just have our rate of change, our slope value is in here. And then a couple of them are written in, a, in an input-output table, which we would need this for to, to verify. So now it's just really figuring out, what is this m value? What is the rate of change? What is the slope of this line? So we're given several points, and I focused in kind of on these points up in quadrant four. So we've got negative two, four. We've got negative one, two. And then we've got zero. All right, so to find slope, to find the rate of change, it's rise over run or the change in y over the change in x. So remember this delta symbol is the symbol for change. So it's how the y changes or how the x changes. It's the rise whether it's going up or down, in a fractional form over the run, okay, going left or right. So as we're looking at this, I'm going to start here with negative 2, 4 to negative 1, 2, and I want to see how it changes here. So this is a little bit backwards and a little bit counterintuitive because we focus on the y value first because that's going to be our numerator. So we're going to go from a 4 to a 2, all right? So the change in y is y2 minus y1. Well, y2 in this case is 4, and y1 is 2. So my change in y is 2. All right, now I want to look at my change in x. So my change in x is x2 minus x1, which in this case, x2 is negative 1 and x1 is, or excuse me, x2 is negative 2, and x1 is negative 1. So my change in x is going to be 
negative 2 minus negative 1. Which remember, when we're subtracting a negative, we actually add it to the total. So this is kind of a strange problem. But my change in x ends up being just negative 1 when I do the computation. Which makes sense because um, we're going, yeah, it'll make, it'll make a little bit more sense in a second. Because where the negative falls is not as significant right this second. Um, but we're going down as opposed to going up. So we're going to end up with a negative slope. We're going to end up with a negative rate of change. All right, so let's go ahead and put our change our x and our change in y into this fraction. So we're going to end up with 2 over negative 1, which would simplify just into negative 2. So our rate of change is negative 2. All right, so let's plug that in and see what that looks like here. So here, if my rate of change is negative 2, every time I input an x, I'm going to multiply it by negative 2 to get my y. So let's see if that holds. So x, negative 1, times negative 2 gives me 2 here for this point. For this point here, x is negative 2, so negative 2 times negative 2 gives me negative, or excuse me, gives me positive 4. So that, that holds true, that holds consistent. All right, so let's take a look at our, at our answer choices. And we see we do actually have this very equation as our last answer choice. So this one was a little bit more complicated because we had to look at the line in order to determine what this rate of change, the slope value would be for us to construct that equation.